Hey everybody, welcome to our midweek update. And uh, man, I'm looking at everything and we need a little bit of good news. So what happens next? Uh, and let's say, what happens next after the rapture? If there is a rapture, actually, the last video I made a case for the rapture. We'll follow it up again in the future with the controversies and the people that say there is no rapture. We'll look at the other side in a future video, but what happens next after the rapture? Or more specifically, I would say this, what happens to us? What happens to our bodies? When do we get our bodies or do we get them at that time? Well, this is what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He said, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption put on incorruption or inherit incorruption. In other words, Paul was writing, we are not going to inherit heaven. We're not going to be in heaven with these bodies because they're corrupt. So we need a different body. That's how he starts verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15. And then he says, behold, I tell you a mystery. And here's the mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, the word sleep in verse 51, it means we shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. So what's he saying there? He's saying, there's going to be a time or a generation where not every believer is going to die, but at the same time, every believer will be changed. Very interesting. When in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. In other words, Again, we're not going to inherit heaven. We're not going to be in the presence of the Lord in this earthly body. I say praise the Lord. Uh, so with this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then we shall be brought to pass, or it shall be brought to pass, the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your sting? Victory. This is from the book of Hosea, the Old Testament. The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so last time we looked at the Bible and the teaching that there is going to be a rapture. Again, I'll deal with the future controversies or the people who have the different timing or what's really what they say is really going to happen and not going to happen. Deal with that on a future one. But here... What happens to us? Well, we've got to put on a new body. Uh, we can't go into heaven with this current body. I think that's pretty good. Uh, in fact, I think that's great news. So listen, if you're a Christ follower, a believer in Jesus, you're already right now a child of God. As amazing as that is, it's going to get even better. So think through this with me. Christ will either raise you from the dead or transform you at the rapture, we're all going to be changed. First Corinthians chapter 15, yet not everybody is going to be dead at that time of our transformation. That's what Paul wrote. That transformation will uh, be from either a dead or dying mortal body to a never dying, never even sick, immortal body, an incorruptible body that can never know death or sickness, no more breaking down, no more creaky joints, no more shortness of breath, no more headaches, uh, the time of no more and no more dying ever. No funeral homes, no hospitals, none of that. Jesus will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body. That's what Philippians chapter 3 tells us. I'm Noah, and I'd like to let you know about some of the exciting things happening at Hope For Our Times. We just opened our online store at HopeForOurTimes.com. We're excited to offer many resources that are aimed at bringing hope to a hopeless world. We have books, videos, and apparel available right now. We're adding new resources constantly, so be sure to check the store frequently. On September 22nd through the 30th, Pastor Tom will be joining Pastor Billy Crone, Pastor Bran Holnhouse, Mondo Gonzalez, and Ken Michael for a European Prophecy Conference. We would like you to pray for the conference and teachers. If you would like more information, Visit HopeForOurTimes.com and click on the Events tab. Pastor Tom will be speaking at the Imminent Return Prophecy Summit in Norman, Oklahoma, October 5th through the 8th. This conference will feature over 20 
of the world's top Bible prophecy teachers proclaiming the Word of God. To sign up for the live stream, visit HopeForOurTimes.com and click on the Events tab. Have you downloaded the Hope For Our Times app? It's a great tool that is updated daily with current news articles and special app-only videos. There is also a Bible reading plan that is built in. Visit the App Store or the Google Play Store to download this free resource. Remember to tell someone about the hope that comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And so what do we know about the Lord's resurrection body since we're going to be transformed to have a body like His? Well, we know quite a bit. In many ways, it's like a normal human body. His body, the body of Jesus, is real. Not a fantasy or a ghost or an apparition, but real like you and I are real. It will be different, but real. Uh, this is demonstrated by the fact that Jesus could be seen, touched, and recognized. Again, we're going to have a body like his body. What else do we know? Well, his body is visible. John chapter 20, verse 14 says that outside the Lord's empty tomb, Mary Magdalene saw Jesus standing there. He, he was not invisible. He could be seen like any man. In fact, at first she even thought he was the gardener. Remember that passage? But his body is also recognizable. Mary recognized Jesus near the empty tomb. She recognized his voice and then afterwards his face. Again, because she first thought he was the gardener. And then when she heard him speak, she goes, oh, Rabboni. <clears throat> this is Jesus. This is Messiah. His apostles recognized him on several occasions. Cleopas and his friend recognized Jesus after walking with him on the road to Emmaus. Later still, over 400 of his followers would see him and recognize him. Uh, what a comfort to us to know that we will recognize our loved ones, even if we're not used to seeing them in glorified bodies, and they will recognize us. For me, that is so neat. I get asked this question a lot. Will I know my loved one? Will I know my children? Will I know my friends? When we're all in the presence of the Lord, absolutely. In fact, you want to know something else? Your relationship in heaven, although it's going to be different than it is right now with all of your earthly family and earthly friends, it's actually going to be better. It's hard for us to imagine that because the best that we know is the things of this world. But in heaven, our relationships will be even better than they are right now. Um, what else do we know about the body of Jesus? Well, it's corporeal. That means his body is material, it's tangible. Uh, he can touch and be touched. Later in the evening, after his encounter with Mary Magdalene, Jesus appeared to his disciples. In John chapter 20, verses 19 through 20, the Bible says, Jesus came and he stood in the midst and said, peace to, and said to them, excuse me, peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Those scars reassured his disciples that this was the one who died on that cross, the one who taught them and led them and now had risen as he said he would. But Thomas was not there that night. He did not believe them uh, when they told him uh, about their encounter. He seemed to forget all the miracles that he had seen. Uh, he said, unless I see his hands, uh, in his hands, the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, Jesus came to meet his disciples again, and this time Thomas was with them. Jesus spoke directly to his friend Thomas, and he said, hey, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Wow. Uh, the resurrected Jesus said to his disciples, behold, my hands and my feet. Uh, that is, I myself handle me and, and, and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Wow, folks, this is absolutely amazing. Again, as Jesus has this resurrected body, we too are going to have a resurrected body. This is really amazing. Jesus, in his resurrection body, 
He can touch and be touched. He, he does not and will not have a Casper the friendly ghost-like body, and neither will we. We will have real human bodies. A spirit does not have flesh and bones, but we will. Listen, again, it's not a Casper the friendly ghost kind of thing where we're floating around out there. The body of Jesus, in his body, he could eat. In Luke chapter 24, right after inviting them to touch him, Jesus says something amazingly ordinary, something anyone might say when visiting close friends after a long journey. He, get this. He says, it's right there in the Bible. You can read it. Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Hallelujah. Our glorified bodies will not preclude us from eating food and apparently from enjoying it, especially in the company of friends. And think of what heaven is described like, or even the millennial kingdom. In the millennial kingdom, you think of all over the nation of Israel. There's going to be the vineyards with the wine that's going to be produced. And we think of Jesus where he said, hey, I'm not going to drink of this last cup until you are with me in my house. Jesus is going to be ruling and reigning from Jerusalem. Uh, the wine that's there, the food we're going to be able to eat, and we will have our glorified bodies there. And then in the new heaven and the new earth, we're going to have our glorified bodies where the tree is that has 12 different types of fruit, each one bearing fruit in its own season. What kind of food are we going to get in heaven? We think the food here is pretty good. It's going to be better in heaven. That's cool. As comforting... As it is that our bodies will have these similarities, there will also be some differences. And, and though they may not be as comforting, they are definitely uh, cool. So think of this. The differences from our present bodies, we'll be able to walk through walls. Uh, the night Jesus invited Thomas to touch his scars, his appearance was simple but spectacular. In John chapter 20, verse 26, the Bible says Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in their midst and said, peace to you. The Bible says that after Jesus was crucified and before the day of Pentecost, the disciples would lock their doors for fear of the Jews. Jesus entered a locked room. He was corporeal, but with a twist. He was material, but he could enter a locked room without breaking the door down. That is cool. What else? We will be powerful. These, our bodies, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 43 says, that our bodies will be sown in weakness and raised in power. Uh, also, in corruption and raised in incorruption, right? We just read that. We will be spiritual. So think we're going to have a powerful body. We're going to be spiritual. We're going to be able to walk through walls. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44 says, it's sown in a natural body. It's raised in a spiritual body. So while our bodies will be material, touchable, able to be recognized in even able to eat, they will also be spiritual, no longer subject to the flesh and its many weaknesses, yet able to enjoy walking and talking and eating with friends. We will be also incorruptible as we read. 1 Corinthians 15, again, verse 42 says that the old body will be sown in corruption, but the new body will be raised in incorruption. This is not a reference to people who can't be bought off. It is a, uh, it's a reference to not dying, not getting sick, uh, not breaking down. Uh, we also will be immortal. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 goes on to say this mortal must put on immortality, no more dying. Uh, so when this corruptible is put on incorruption and this mortal is put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the same that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, Hades, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin. But the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, this is really amazing. I think I look at my body and I think, well, in heaven, I'm, uh, I'm not going to have to go to the gym. If you want to go to the gym, I'm sure there'll be a gym there for you. Uh, you start thinking of all the different things. I think of what our bodies are going to look like. I, I, I think they're going to look very similar to how they do now with this twist. Just as Mary didn't recognize Jesus at first in the garden until he spoke, but then she recognized him, we're going to look the same but a little bit different. And, and, and there will be tall people. There'll, I, I believe there will be short people. There's going to be people of all different races. 
Sometimes we have this idea that in heaven, we're all going to be cookie cutter images of each other. No, we're not. That would be boring. That would be the pits. I heard Klaus Schwab say recently that in his new world order, his fourth Reich or whatever he calls it, the fourth industrial revolution, he said he, he wants everybody in the world to have a uniform. I mean, could you imagine that? That's the insanity of people who are apart from God and separated from God. In Christ Jesus, when we're in heaven, we're not going to look like that. We're not going to be wearing some uniform. We're not going to be looking the same. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Listen, these promises are true for every believer. It will either happen to you after you die or while you are still walking on this earth, but it will happen. Listen, God bless you guys. Be encouraged.